guys, what's up and welcome back to my channel. If you haven't been here before, hi, my name is Rachel. I'm into lifestyle and motherhood. And we have a whiny little baby today. Um, we're in the midst of potty training, so she's a little bit whiny because, of course, um, she's been potty trained for the last three months, but she's been regressing. So we're going to do a video on that later on. But just in case you guys hear her complaining in the background, she's mad because she has undies on and she wants to put on a uh, diaper or a pull-up. So I told her no because... Gotta get this thing full blast. She doesn't have any other issues, but it's been three straight months of doing it, and now all of a sudden she wants to stop because I'm I have a baby in my daycare. So anyway, you're not here for that. Today you're here about the Gaha Hill. We're gonna talk about my experience being up there. <laughs> um, you're gonna see her in the background. Yeah, she's messy. She's a kid. It's okay. She just got done eating a cookie. It's it's about noon. So, she had a cookie for a snack. I got my smoothie, just a detox smoothie with some cranberries. It has some bananas, almond milk. Um, I have some lemon juice in it. Uh, we have some pecans, some flax seeds, stuff like that. Just a detox, just a milk booster, stuff like that. So, anyway. Um, okay, so obviously I'm wearing a long sleeve flannel. I have a bee sting here. Those of you who have not seen it or who have not heard about it, go to my last uh two videos passed and i show my beasting in there um i don't think i'm gonna be able to get it on camera today let's see i think we're in luck but you're not gonna be able to see it too well um if you guys can see like right around here i'm sure you guys can see i can see it in the camera it looks like a light blue but it's actually a beasting and then that dark dot right there you guys can see that right there that's actually where the bee sting was but there was no stinger in it what you need baby banana, banana. banana. told you we we're gonna be stopping a few times today didn't i if i didn't <coughs> yeah. mom life it happens there you go baby go eat your nana um so anyway um, that happened at Gahai Hill, and I had an allergic reaction to the point where I'm lucky I was alive. Um, I, it's, the allergic reaction started, but I didn't have my throat swell or anything like that. I just had hives on my arm, um, and they had told me that if I didn't get it treated right away, it could pass through to my milk to Novell. And I had never heard of that before, so I got it treated right away, and it took me almost two weeks to get it fully treated to get it to look like this because it was so bad and horrible and nasty and disgusting and it hurt now it's to the point where it doesn't hurt but they were right i do have some scarring you guys saw that there's still pink tissue around it it definitely left a scar around where the area was um had hives and that sucks but you know it's from experience so anyway gahai hill um gahai hill the seneca native territory um the seneca were named as the people of the hill that's what seneca means that's why they called themselves the seneca native americans and um the hill that they were on is a very tall hill they had a lot of battles a thousand years ago there was a very bloody battle up there and um a lot of native americans we call them natives now back in the day they called them indians but i feel like that's disrespectful they are native americans um because they are from here they're not just indians you know, that just roamed the planet. They were here, um, just like Christopher Columbus was somewhere in the earth. Uh, Native Americans were somewhere in the earth. So anyway, a thousand years ago, um, there was a bloody battle up on Gahai Hill. And Gahai Hill is actually located at Red House, New York. Um, it's the Allegheny uh, State Park. And I live about 10 minutes away from there, maybe five, depending on what I'm doing. Um, so it's not posted or anything you're allowed to go up there they just tell you to go up at your own uh free will and risk because it's not just superstition things up there are real and it's crazy um a few things to go by that they say happens up there uh they say that there's orbs with witches faces in them they say that there's a man like a flesh eating man who has like jagged sharp teeth um that look like they've been filed or chiseled down um to be sharp um and i guess he eats people he looks like a man, but he's tall and slender, and at first when I heard about this, I said, Slender Man? Like, why would you explain him like that? But it's not Slender Man. I don't believe Slender Man is real. I mean, I did before, but now as an adult, I don't I don't know if I believe it or not. But um, 
they claim to have seen him. Um, now that it's closer to present day, I have uh, spoken to a few elder Native Americans who had said they seen that man and they had a conversation with him. So it must be he's not eating people anymore. I'm not exactly sure how that works, if that really is a thing or what. But we've heard about that. Um, there's also um, gunshots. You can hear cannons. You can hear the drums like the Native Americans would play or like anything like that. Um, I know back in um, 1980 something, I believe end of the 80s, beginning of, uh, or end of uh, 70s, beginning of 80s, there was actually a civil war up there, one of them, and it was led by Ulysses Grant. And we found actually one of his, um, it looked like a missile, and I don't even know if I have a picture. I'll have to post a picture, like, later on, like, if I find one again. I don't know. I think my husband took a picture, him and his buddy. But it was, like, pretty big. It was, like, cemented. It looked like the end of the ground. We tried to pull it out, and we thought it was gold, and we were going to, like, pull it out and, like, take it to the Native American Museum, if it really was, because that's pretty cool. Nobody ever goes up there anymore because they're so, like, scared and frightened. But it wasn't. It was blue, it was chipping, and it had the marker 17 on it. And we were told houses used to be up there. So it could have been like they marked the, the house number 17. Or if it was Ulysses Grant's house, we're not exactly sure. Or it could have been a house they invaded and made everybody leave. I'm not exactly sure because um, Allegheny State Park used to be a native, like the entire place was a native territory before it came Allegheny State Park. Everybody lived up there, it seemed like. But it's really close to the Kinsu Dam, if you guys have heard of that. Um... So, but anyway, we found one of those. Um, as we were going up, um, we got up to the point where it was kind of getting steep, and I did not have an with me. She was with Grammy and Grampy. Thank goodness for that, because after I tell you what happened, <laughs> you're going to understand why. Um, anyway, as I'm walking up the hill, and I'm getting, like, partially up there, like, the air is going to get thin, obviously, when you get up to the top. Well, I got to the point where I was wearing my little gray uh, Hollister hoodie that I have and somebody like it felt like somebody grabbed my shoulder or like tapped me like how somebody kind of taps you and like looks the other way like it's not me that's what it felt like then it felt like like a leaf or something fell on my shoulder like something light but like I don't know how to explain it it was like light but it was like airy at the same time like there was really nothing there but you could feel it and I was like okay whatever so I told Cole something just touched me I grabbed his hand he pulled me up on the part of the uh, hill that I was trying to get up and we just kept walking. I didn't think anything of it. Then we started seeing a ton of mushrooms in the ground. And the old folk saying for like, doesn't matter what kind of religion you are. I've heard it multiple times from different people, even from my family. Um, mushrooms grow, in the old pastime, mushrooms would go, grow on witches um, and if they were buried in the ground or just on people in general, if there are bodies there. And there were these orange mushrooms and Colt and his buddy picked them up and they were smelling them to see if they were truly mushrooms or if they were like a flower that just looked like a mushroom. And they didn't, like, they didn't taste them or nothing. That's, that, that's not what they did. They were just smelling them. And they didn't really have a scent to them. But then when you peeled them open, they were wet and moist and gross. And it was like, eh. Like, we had hand sanitizer, thank God. He, they put it on their hands. And then we kept walking up. But it kind of scared me. It kept catching my eye. And anyway, we got up to the power lines, and the power lines, if you look from the road um, on the highway, the expressway, it goes like this, and then it comes straight through. This little area right here is actually the power lines. What, baby? Ouch. Yep, take it. Um, so we got up there, and there's a pole, because if you walk too far uh, forward, there's like a little drop-off. <coughs> Bless me. There's like a little drop-off right there um that you could actually fall down and you would end up in the expressway we didn't go that far Colt did take pictures but he's a dummy he's a weirdo so we left with him anyway there's a stake in the ground they say if you go back into the woods angled from the stake that you would find the slaughter stone is what they call it and the slaughter stone were where the witches made human sacrifices all the time because they moved up to that hill They moved up to that hill years ago because that was the only place they thought that the natives and anybody else would not come up. There's also a saying so that there's little people that dance around the slaughter stones and they haunted the Seneca Nation 
um, Native Americans for the longest time, and I think that's possibly what caused them to drive themselves out was the little people, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, I have just read that it actually caused them to be frightened, um, and they would terrorize them and everything, especially at nighttime, witching hours 4 a.m. Um, and there's also one other story. <laughs> I was so scared of this. Um, on Red House, if you're going over ASP, which is Allegheny State Park, one, there is a Native American man who will ride from Quaker to the Red House side with you. He'll sit in your front seat. He won't say nothing. He'll just ride. And um, if you look it up online, because it's also called the High Hill, the Witch's Trail, um, there was actually somebody who reported it, and there was, their dog was in the back and kept staring at the front seat barking, and then the driver turned and looked, and there was a Native American man. He didn't blink. He didn't look at you. He didn't nothing. Once you get to Red House, right on that line, he disappears. It was like he just needed a ride. And there's also a story about a lumberjack. I don't know if all these are true. I'm not sure. It kind of scares me a little bit. I just know from my experience what happened. Um, and what time to tell you guys. It's almost Halloween anyway. Um, so when we got up there, we went straight in. And it was starting to get dark after we were up there. There were mosquitoes everywhere. We took a few breaks on the way up, but not too many. Um, and then we started hearing things like sticks were cracking behind us. But once we got got halfway up to the top of the hill, we started hearing drums or cannons. We're not sure which ones they were. We definitely did hear it. We thought maybe it could have been dry thunder um, from being so hot because it was so hot it wasn't even funny out there. I was dying, and I had a long sleeve shirt on. I had my muck boots on and my jeans on. It was horrible, but I did not want to get bit. Um, I also didn't want to get cold if something like that happened. I'd rather have layers on that I could take off rather than not have anything to put back on at all. And we were walking through big brush and weeds, so we didn't want to have snakes be down there and wearing sandals or something and step on one and get bit or something like that. So um, anyway, um, so it started getting dark. We started hearing the footsteps. We started hearing like sticks breaking. We got to this point where it was so dark um, it wasn't like dark where we couldn't see it, but it was dark compared to being in the woods. Like the outside, we could see that it was still light, but when we were in the woods, it's obviously darker. And we got to the point where there was this dark part of the woods. Well, anyway, we stepped. We must have stepped on a beehive or something. Bees came out of nowhere. They started attacking us. I only got bit in one spot. Me, Cole, and um, his friend Ronnie got bit on the right arm in this general area. I believe Ronnie got bit like down here by his elbow. We still got bit on the same arm. Colts broke open after a couple days. Mine didn't go away. Mine looked horrible, horrid. I was so scared. Um, I was panicking. I was breathing heavy. I was like, oh my goodness, like I'm going to die. I don't have an EpiPen with me, nothing like that. I'm allergic. At least I was when I was a child. I didn't know this was only my second time being bit. And Colt said, calm down. The air is thin up here. You're going to make yourself like pass out from having a heart attack, something like that, like not breathing, whatever. So I calmed down. Finally, we couldn't find the slaughter stones, so the guys decided, let's turn around. Thankfully, because I was scared, and I was like, I just want to go home. So we're walking down the hill, and I mean, I remember Colt had his arm underneath me and had his hand over here, and I had my arm over top of him. So when we were walking down the hill, it was like I was dragging him because I was shorter, so I was like slipping and falling. And a branch came out of like nowhere, like literally nowhere, at, at our feet. It missed me, which is the funny thing because it was so long, you'd think it would've hit me and Ronnie also. Ronnie was towards this way more. And Colt was over on my side, obviously, on this side. And um, it came out of nowhere and it hit the front of Colt's knee. Like it just, and he like fell and it made me fall, obviously. And I was like, are you okay, what happened? Well, we took our flashlight and we looked and this big branch was like out of nowhere. And we had our flashlight going down that way. We knew which way to go. And it came out of nowhere. We don't know where it came from. So we started walking down because I kept hearing something. It sounded like somebody was whispering. We don't, don't know what exactly it was. As we're getting to almost the bottom of the hill, but it's still pretty dark in here. There's areas everywhere and we're in a dark part of the forest trying to leave. And it, you could feel it started to get cold in that area. Like it was freezing cold, like AC. I was like, holy, now I'm freezing. I was literally like, my lips were trembling. I was freezing so bad. And I remember hearing like a whisper, like get, I don't even know what it was. It sounded to me like it was get out, but I don't think it said get out now that I'm out of there. I think that it was just like the wind and it, the, like that instant, like I'm stuttering thinking about it because I can't even, I can't even process what it was. 
um, I wish I recorded it, but I was so scared I just had to get out of there because something's not right. I don't know if it's because there was a civil war up there and there's just a lot of people who just want their lives back because they were killed during that time. That could be it too. I'm not sure, but it felt like you could hear it, feel the wind on your back and you could hear it. it was so loud. There was not even like an inch or two behind us. There was like a, a horse racing past us. That's what it felt like. That's what it sounded like. And we were so scared, I didn't even know. Like, we hurried up, we turned around, flashlights. If that was an animal, there's no way it came that close to us, did not attack us, and there's no way it got by that quick. No way. And even there was brush behind us, and it wasn't even trampled down at all. Yeah. I was scared. I pissed myself a little bit. <laughs> Sorry. Um, TMI. But... Um, at that point, I knew something was wrong. We had to hurry up and get out. We got out. We got down to a point where we saw somebody's backyard, but we didn't want to go through the backyard because we didn't want them to come out, like, with guns or anything, thinking that we were trespassing, thinking that we were going to go, you know, because where I live, it's all country, and um, people do do that. Um, but we didn't want them to think that something was wrong, whatever. I didn't want to get shot. I didn't want to get killed by an animal when my daughter was somewhere else and I wouldn't want to just leave her like that you know um so we kept walking well we turned around and sure enough we saw someone and I don't know if it was an animal if it was a human what it was we're not even sure we turned around as we got out of there and we were in the daylight and we were in that person's around that person's backyard because we had to go over the barbed wire fronts to our right to get out of their backyard somebody was standing there and we stood there and we kept watching, but we kept walking at the same time because we were scared. I think I was scared the most. I think the boys, kind of, the men, whatever, um, kind of kept themselves sane a little bit. I think they were a little bit paranoid, but I don't think they were scared because they went up there like eight or nine times afterwards in the dark around witching hours. So, I don't know, but um, whatever it was, stood there and watched us until we got to the road, which was like about a mile or two out of the woods where the road was we had to go up through their backyard and it stood there and then once we actually got out to the road it like walked slowly back in like it looked like it backed up so I don't know what it was it could have been a person people might be living off the land up there I'm not sure but I was scared to death <laughs> and I don't think I'm ever gonna go up there again like I was thankful I got home at Colt's parents' house, I hugged my daughter, I kissed her, I was thankful to be alive, I was blessed, because I w don't know what I would have done if she would have lost me over an animal eating me in the woods or something, because I'm a very small person, I am only 104 pounds, and I'm not even 5 foot, I'm 4'11", just barely, um, so I don't know what I would have done if she had to lose me like that, so... Uh, let it alone a sickness or illness or something especially like a bee sting that's ridiculous um so but I do believe that there's a lot of I don't want to say hauntings I want to say like spirits um up on Gahai Hill um but I think in my own opinion I think that there was witchery um that they were talking of back then and I actually read a few articles that say other things as well and I really do believe that that's true um, the guys did find the slaughter stones, though. Um, the biggest slaughter stone had been removed, I'm assuming, by the Allegheny State Park themselves when they went up there to uh, reinvestigate and everything and do whatever else they could. Um, but I'm actually not 100% sure. Um, I do know also that a lot of people go up there, like, a lot. And some people say that some don't return and then some do. So, no, no, baby. So I don't honestly know how to go about it. I just know that I was scared and I don't think it's a place to be if you're not with a buddy and you're hiking. A lot of people do disappear up there for real though, or they get stuck or they get something happens where they fall off the side of the power line, stuff like that. And it's scary, but I'll definitely leave a link down below um, for Google so you guys can check out. Um, no, that honey, no. She's getting the garbage bags so. up. So you guys can check out the articles for this. And again, it's at Allegheny State Park. So if you guys are interested in that, make sure you check my down bar description below. Um, and also, if you guys like this video, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. I have more fall videos coming out. I just thought, excuse me, being the end of summer, that this would be a really good video. 
and it, from my own experience, since I told you about my bee sting, some of my viewers like to uh, know more about me and know things that happen. And when I mentioned that, I got a lot of um, messages, like to my email, to Facebook, the people that know me, that wanted me just to upload this. So that's why I'm doing this today. I know it's a pretty long video, but I hope you guys stayed until the end. If you guys made it this far, make sure you comment down below and tell me what your favorite part of the story was. 100% I'm not lying. This is everything that did happen to me. I'm not sure about everything else because I didn't see any orbs or anything, but it was only, I want to say 8, 9 o'clock p.m. when we got out, and it was about 5 or 6 when we got in. Um, so we weren't up there too long, but it did get pretty dark. Um, at that point, we ended up getting back to Cold's parents' house at about 10 or 11. So, but anyway, until my next video... God bless you guys, and thank you for joining and tuning in. Bye.